Hi crafting friends, welcome to my podcast, my name is Barbara and this podcast is the Bondi Crafter. I think Bondi, a beautiful place in the earth, just love it. At the moment it's winter, so 19th of July, London of June, getting a bit ahead of myself. I'm looking forward to the Tour of France starting and that starts on the 1st of July, so don't want to miss that. <laughs> It would be sad to have missed it. Um, it's been a busy week. Uh, I've been going through my sewing room, the little trolleys. I've, I've tidied up the three little trolleys and got all my sewing and knitting equipment sorted, hopefully, and the patterns all in one place. Uh, still a fair bit to go. Got to go through the yarn boxes. I have a few. I have two new subscribers. Welcome so much to my podcast. Hope you stay with me and enjoy. It's so much fun making these podcasts, I've got to say. I really enjoy it. It's so, so interesting and, you know, I like taking videos of out and about and what I'm up to and look back and see what I've actually done. Um, I'm hoping to go to the craft show, which is uh, starts at the end of the, this month, I think. Um, it's going to be at uh, Homebush Bay, which is where the um, Olympic Games were held when they were here in Sydney. So, hoping to buy some yarn, maybe some fabric. We'll see how that goes. Um, in this podcast, this episode. Um, we'll have a look at, uh, just have a look at what I've been doing. We went to the movies, we saw Downton Abbey, we'll have a talk about that. Have a talk about the dresses. Um, I also made um, an episode this week and it was about hand, hand quilting in my lap. And it's, I think um, it's, well, it's very interesting for me, but a lot of people are interested also. And I hope you will be too. And it shows how I hand caught in my lap, which saves, you know, having a frame and a hoop and big things, because I live in a smallish flat and I like to be able to just pile it all up in a pile on the couch when I'm, when I'm not sewing on it. That was an interesting thing to do. So if you're interested, have a look in the um, episode before this and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let's see, the weather has been very chilly this year. Winter is, I don't know, it feels cooler than usual. The clouds are moving along pretty fast and I've got a southerly Arctic blast behind, Antarctic blast behind them. I think it's going to snow soon in the mountains, which is only 60 kilometres away. I am not going to the snow. Although the knitting that I've done, I'm sure somebody in the mountains would appreciate it, but it seems so warm down here on the coast, even when it's cold. So, we'll see how that is. So I hope you like this um, episode. Thank you. Vest is almost complete. So I practically finished whip. <laughs> I didn't get round to embroidering the wheat yet. The sh sheaves, I think you call the top part of wheat. Um, but it's all done except for that. I like the neckline. I think it turned out really nice. And this Japanese yarn is so beautiful. And I like this side of the knitting. I like the edge of the ribbing. I cast off Knit One Pearl one. I like the edge that it gives on the edge. 
Yeah, so very happy with it. Be nice over the dress. So should have a few finished items next time. So I've had a I think my vest now is pretty much finished. I love it, but I did a few more things to it. Remember, um, the ribbing was um, much more um, wavy than it is now. And what I did was I unpulled the ribbing on both back to, I think, two rows before, so I didn't um, decrease the number of stitches. All I did was went down to a 4.5 millimeter needle and did the ribbing and cast off again. And this time I cast off with, I made sure that the um, cast off ribbing was um, darker this time. The ribbing is um, knit one pearl one. I like the edge. I think it's really nifty, crisp, let's say, same as the neck. And then I wool embroidered the tops of the wheat. And I'm really happy with how it came out. I'm no embroiderer by any means, but I'll give anything a go 50 times. <laughs> I really like the blue. It looks more like lavender, but... You know, I just think it's lovely. Mm, so that's finished now. I'm so happy. I love making this. I made this dress yesterday afternoon. It's a fen dress. I love the fen dress pattern, F-E-N. It's uh, very easy to make and suits my body shape. I'm a cello. I love the fabric. It's that Tissuti fabric that I bought not long ago, linen. It's 100% linen printed. And the roses on it are just so lovely. And I thought, you know, I'll make myself I'll make myself a nice dress out of this because I want to wear it. And I'm sure I'll wear it. It's just it doesn't seem to be turning out the same as the ones I've made before. And I've made like eight before using this pattern. I've got to sew the hem up. I'll have a look. Uh, um, let me show you what I've done. The neck. I have made some modifications to the top because I didn't like the sleeves and I want to wear a, a bolero type jacket over the top, a light jacket. So I've taken the sleeve back and just have it like a hem and... I'm still thinking I might take it back a bit more just so that the um, armhole looks a bit neater under a jacket. It's the neck that I'm worried about. I don't remember. I must have cut too much fabric for the neck and I'm not really happy with it. I might take the um, seams just up a bit higher so the neck isn't so wide. I have sewn um, my self-made binding on the on the neck edge but I can undo that very easily because I haven't top sewed it or anything I can undo that I was going to just fold it over so that it's more stable a facing but still thinking about it that is one of the big dramas going on here at the moment the neck this fabric is so beautiful. I just, I'm not going to give up on it. So 
I also only bought 1.25 meters of the fabric because I'm I'm not stingy, but it is it's expensive, and I know that I can safely get the main parts out of the fabric. So the pockets are uh, inside of the pocket is not the same it's a different fabric so just a white lawn inside and this fabric does fray a lot so i haven't got uh, the overlocker out at the moment or even going i don't think so i zigzag everything and i did make french seams on some of the parts but i love these pockets they sit so nicely um went on so there are only a few parts to this dress. There's the front and the back bodice, front and back skirt, and the pockets. That's all there is to it. And it makes a very beautiful dress. How beautiful is it? And you know, to buy a dress like this at one of the shops, nicer shops up, up at the junction, would be... You know, it would cost like $150 minimum. So, price doesn't really matter to me. But, you know, when you're buying fabric and it does add up. But beautiful dress. It will be a beautiful dress. And with a black bolero, perfect. And um, vintage beads. This is a dress hanging up. It does, um, I think it has a nice drape. I could say a few negative things about it, but I won't because I love it so much. Unconditional love. <laughs> the pockets are lovely. A higher waist than normal but still not that high I'll do the hem today I've had it hanging overnight I don't like ironing linen uh, but I will give it a light press where I want the seams and everything to be it's just the neck and the armholes that are that I'm thinking about and I'm thinking I will take the armholes back a bit more but um, very easy to fix uh, I got out the sewing machine this morning and I did a few modifications that I wanted to do still nothing about the neck but the armholes I'm really happy with them now they are more narrow so I took an inch and a half an inch and a half off here so it was out of here and then I gradually went in and then did a more of a curve coming out which I think will will fit a lot better under a you know under a bolero or something that's finely knitted and I also did the hem As it's just me, um, <laughs> with no one to ask about, you know, trying it on and doing the hem. I just got out my trusty green ruler there and made a straight line across the bottom of the hem and sewed it up with um, double stitching. <laughs> so easy. But... This is going to be really lovely. I'll try it on and I'll um, show you how it looks when I'm finished. Wish me luck. This is my pen dress, my latest touch. I'm wearing it with a bolero. This is how I plan to wear them all. Got nice pockets. For this, the only thing that I'm worrying about is the neck. I don't know whether you can see any better at all. But how does it look? Oops. 
do you think? Roses are nice. Remember the quandary I was in just a while ago with the neck? Well, this is what I've done. It's laying pretty flat. I've put in a label that I've taken off one of my other items that I think is beautiful and I've sewn it in there. It's like a stamp for me. But with the neck, I made another two and a half inch drip, sewed it to the inside of this it seems to be a false color or something i don't know what you call it is there ever has it ever been documented <laughs> as to what this is that i've made then i folded it over and it's like well it was bias binding so it's double bias binding because this was bias binding also and this is now bias binding i fold it over and it's made it stiffer much stiffer it's given it some body so i'm pretty happy with it i just don't want it to gape and i'm wondering if it gapes what do i do do i make a little tiny pleat like that or something you know has anyone got any ideas Jacqueline Salem, help. You may know how to do this. I don't know how to do it. Any good sewers out there that knows, dressmakers, knows how to stop this gaping going on. But other than that, I also did the sleeves. So I cut the sleeves back and I've put bias binding in them now. They're much thinner and I look and I think um, taking that extra inch and a half out of it has made me look thinner if that is at all possible <laughs> oh so funny anyway what things are going on here anyway if you've got any ideas on how to help me with the neckline please do it's linen and it's it's a uh, I wouldn't say heavy duty linen. I wouldn't even it's it's somewhat of a lightweight linen, but just a bit more. So a bit more body than a lightweight. And I haven't lined it. I'm thinking I'll wear something under the skirt or in summer. I don't think it will matter. I'll just wear leggings under it. Anyway, thoughts please, people. Two fan dresses this week. That's what I've been doing. First I made the beautiful roses. And then I already had this one cut out, this fabric, beautiful fabric from Spoonflower. I'll put the designer's name in the description box below. But I just love her. It's Katarina. And she has screen printed, I think it's screen printing, this beautiful fabric. I just love the colours. Mainly I love the colours in it. Can you spot anything else? I love the moths. So, yeah, um, two and a half hours to sew it up. It's um, spandex jersey. Very nice fabric so it doesn't fray. So I don't have to seam, do anything special to the seams. For the binding, I just use some tartan binding I had from Spotlight for the neck and for the armholes the same as the Fendress just off-white binding it, they're cotton too this one I had enough fabric for the pockets and the lining I really like this shape just and on the pattern remember I was I altered the um armholes so I altered the pattern this time and I've recalibrated the armholes <laughs> I'll be wearing it you know, with a, a vest also not a vest um 
a bolero type thing to go with it. I really love it. For the hem, I just um, double stitched around. And because it's non-fraying or anything, I didn't have to fold it over so that it's it's not a thick hem either. And for the seams, I just double stitch them on my straight sewing <laughs> stitch. So yeah, really happy. Two more dresses. I already have like a few. <laughs> Favourite pattern, Fen dress. Great for my shape. And yeah, really happy with them. Now I have to take a rest from sewing and see what happens. But not from quilting. <laughs> this is an example of the big stitch quilting I do. I thought I'd make some little quilts, you know, just to keep a track of how things are done by me. <laughs> this type of um, quilting is called big stitch quilting. I can get, uh, I think it's 10 stitches to the inch. The really traditional quilters get like 20 or some, something. <laughs> and I can't. So yeah, big stitch quilting, my favourite shape, hexagons. This is a beautiful one. I wanted to try out the Japanese um, patterns for quilting. I really like this one. And this one is um, an example of the components that go into making quilt of any size really we have the outside the top and then we have batting this one is black wool batting and the back um, this is a miniature quilt or a sample so I love my samples I think they're just a neat way to show off how quilting is done with the big stitch method what do you think I think it's really neat <laughs> I would but yes I think it's really neat and very easy on the fingers I've got arthritis in my knuckles um, and some of my fingers are frozen but this will not stop me from making quilts <laughs> this is a um, big quilt that I'm hand quilting in my lap a beautiful um, trip around the world 100% well, 99.5% K Facet and Philip Jacobs fabrics. I don't think there's any of Brandon's in there. They're my older fabrics. Maybe the fish, I can't remember. And the black is definitely not theirs. That's before K thought black would go with his fabrics. I remember him saying that. Anyway. This is how I, this is how it looks now, out flat. I've started to hand quilt and I've only done um, in the corners, um, edge, uh, corner to corner on every second row just to get it so that I can take the pins out and then I will do some more inlaying. I've done that one and the one next to it. That one there. This didn't take me long. I've only started hand quilting this one yesterday afternoon. Um, these are the pins that I use. I don't um, 
faced with threads anymore. I used to be down on the floor and tacking. Too old for that now. Knees won't do it and I probably couldn't get up. <laughs> but <laughs> these pins are so wonderful and they do the job perfectly. And uh, I, I must have about a box of pins for each quilt. My husband has been back and bought every packet out from Spotlight that there was, but um, they keep getting them in or re-putting re them out on the shelves. I have about six packets of the pins, and I think there must be about, I can't remember how many is in a box, but a nice amount, and they last forever, and they're very sharp. I just, if they go blunt or they won't go through the fabrics, I just don't use them, throw them out. But yeah. This is basting and sewing and the back. I don't get folds in a hand quilting in my lap. It's perfectly flat. You can see where the pins go through. Just looking for the quilting. Let's have a look. There it is there. It's such good camouflage, you can't see it. But yeah, the back is flat. Um, with my quilts, as I've said before, I put the binding on first by machine. This one I've used the same as the back. And then I sew the front down by machine also. Yeah. I think it finishes it off nicely, make it last longer. See how we go with this. It won't take long to quilt. I want to get it done in like three weeks, I'd say. Then we'll have another look at it. I'm thinking of making um, this video that I'm making at the minute and the other ones that I've made into a separate lap quilting episode. Might be, might be good. I've also got another two quilts in this series, a red and a blue. So I want to get those done this winter. The fabrics just look so nicely together, don't they? No greens. I love the green. And, you know, I never used to like green that much um, wearing it, but now, especially this acid green, I think it's so beautiful, but it is so beautiful in quilts also. I'm going through my facet fabrics. It's so exciting and so beautiful. These are my trolleys that I had in the sewing room. They're chockers. I've got three of them and they're just taking up a lot of space. And so um, I thought I would give them a makeover and condense, well, categorise all my things into let's say two trolleys which would be very good I found my scissors my fiscus this is what I cut my papers with I've got two of those because you always need more than one a little tiny one that's three eighths I love a three eighths too so that's the two sizes I make oh half inch so oh, sorry half inch hexagons three eighths and one inch and that cuts the papers I use photocopying paper uh, I find photocopying paper to be softer if that's possible but you know not as stiff and uh, not certainly not card because my fingers and uh, makes perfect templates so yeah that's coming along got my um, uh, stuff that I need for making hexagons, hex English paper piecing. Next uh, I've got uh, patterns, paper patterns. And bottom I've got um, plastic templates. I need to go through these trolleys and sort everything out. I have a lot of bags of tiny scraps. And there are some blocks. Oh, it looks like a whole quilt waiting to be put together. Yeah, so I have to go through these at Sunday and 
give me something to do. This um, box came off the top of the trolley that I've already cleaned, so it came out of there. <clears throat> so you can see what I'm up to. I just need space, and I think tidying up is a really good way to clear the brain and let me see what I've got. And also, you know, think. I need to think when I've, um, it's much easier when I've got a clear space. So let's see how we go with these trolleys. It's that time of the year again, and the Tour of Friends starts 1st of July this year. Don't get me the magazine today. It's full of very nice things, maps, times, photos. I have a lot of the magazines from years past. Just love watching it. In the back is where I write in who wins each day. Very exciting to keep a, a check of where they are and who's winning what. I don't really have a favourite team as such, but I do, I, I, I just like, well, I do have a favourite part of every race, like the Giro and the um, Tour of, uh, well, I like all the classics and Tour of Spain and especially in the Tour of France. I have a sp I, I like the mountain stages in all of them. So they are my favourite. But I do like I like it when there's a couple of guys out the front who are out there for most of the race and they win. That is my favourite part of all of it, I'd have to say. I do like the really tall mountains in the Alps and it's, it's just fun to see you know all the castles and everything landscape how they use their land and so here we are starting in Denmark this year love the maps have never seen Copenhagen from a bike before <laughs> so should be fun. Lovely photos. It also has a bit about um, the Australian um, bike race and also some about the Giro, which has just been on in Italy. So, yeah. A fun book. I love it. I love getting it every year. <laughs> we are going to the movies. It's winter here in Sydney. It's so cold. We are going to see Downton Abbey. Mainly to see the costumes. Oh, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's 14. <laughs> 14 degrees. Uh, so here's what's on. Here's what's on at the movies. This is a beautiful old picture theatre. It's the Ritz in Randwick. It's been here for Yonks. Randwick is a lovely place. It's the picture theatre. It's our Aunt Deco picture theatre. We're going to see Top Gun next week. I think it's... um. Um, you know, a re-digitalised version of it, but love the music, love Tom when he was young, you know, it's a good story and it's got planes in it doing amazing things, so what more can you ask for? This is inside the theatre, it's so beautiful, they have changed a few things, this used to be the ticket um, sales place. That's gone. And now they've got a booth there. Looks like they've refurbed. Still has the 
same ambience, but you know, everything changes. They've got automatic doors now, <laughs> and they've got installations. <laughs> I love going to the movies. That's it for this week for me. I'm signing off. Thank you everyone for watching. For anyone who's interested, please, and you're not a subscriber, please like and subscribe. Help my channel grow. Okay. Bye, friends.